Hi everyone, this is Letty from Party Planner Papery. Today we're making a bookmarker folio. I got a request on Instagram to make this, so I decided to go ahead and make it this week. Um, so here we have the actual folio. We will be making the bookmarks as well. They are laminated. Today I'm using the Fairy Tales 6x6 paper pad by Doodlebug for this project. It's the same one that I used the last time that I did this project. You will need five sheets of the 6x6 inch paper, um, preferably one that has some cut aparts, and you'll see why later when we use it to decorate. Um, but you basically will need five sheets of 6x6 paper for this tutorial. And these will actually be the patterns for your bookmarkers, so choose wisely. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut each one vertically, so top to bottom, at the two inch mark. And this is gonna create your bookmarkers. And it actually also is gonna leave you a four by six scrap that you will be using later on to decorate the folio. So from each six by six, you'll cut off two inches on the side and you will end up with a two by six and a four by six. The two by six are gonna be your bookmarks. First thing I do is I usually will trim off any kind of frayed edge or maybe the glue edge from the top of the uh, paper pad. Then we're gonna be corner rounding all of the corners on the bookmarks. I am using the We Are Memory uh, Keepers uh, corner chomper and I'm using the half inch mark or the half inch corner but you actually can use any type of uh, corner rounder and it could be any, any size of corner rounder. So these are the templates for our five bookmarks. Next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and punch a hole in the center top area. Not too close to the edge, but also not too far in. And then usually what I do is I'll use the first one as a template to do all the rest of the holes. And there you go, those are the bookmarks. Next, we're actually gonna personalize these. Um, so we're gonna be using some alpha stickers and add uh, a little girl's name on each of these bookmarks. Um, I am actually making these for a girl named Millie. So each of these bookmarks will have either Millie or the letter M on them. Um, the, the great thing about these alpha letters is I think I got some of them from uh, paper packs that have stickers in them. Um, and I don't always use all of my alphas. Um, and so this actually works out really great because it gives me an opportunity to use up some of these alpha stickers that I rarely, rarely use. So you can actually put stickers on here. Um, you can decorate them with ephemera pieces or just about anything, as long as it's not dimensional, as long as it doesn't have, as long as it stays flat, you pretty much can add whatever you want to decorate this. You could put photos, you could put, you know, stickers or just about anything. And the last one just has the letter M. And those are our five bookmarks. Next, we're gonna be laminating. I am using a Scotch laminator and Scotch laminating sheets. Um, so here, what I'm doing is I'm putting all five in one row, but leaving a little bit of space in between each of the bookmarks. Um, once you run it through the laminator, it is gonna create just a small little bubble around each bookmark, and that is essentially what, what you're gonna wanna leave around the bookmark to help seal it. Um, if you cut into the bubble area, it will break the seal and it might open. So you do want to leave that little bubble area. Um, and then one thing that I do is I do pass it through a couple of times through the laminator just to make sure that all of my um, ends do seal really well. So you'll see me kind of passing it through after I cut them and then I do pass them one more time at the end just for, you know, good measure just in case. And that's what the bookmark looks like once it's laminated. So here are the five laminated bookmarks. Next is gonna be cutting up the ribbon. So each of these strips is around six inches. Um, so I'm cutting one ribbon for each of the bookmarks. You can go a little over, um, you can go around that amount. Um, and so basically what I'm doing is matching up the color ribbon to the bookmark that I want um, as far as the combos. So then I'm going to go ahead and repunch the hole at the top. And I am using a slightly smaller hole punch just so I can keep some of the laminate 
to help reinforce that hole. You can use the same size hole puncher. I've done that before. That works fine as well. Um, but I, I am using a smaller one in this case. So then I'm tying on the ribbons. The way that I'm doing this is I'm actually sticking both ends of the ribbon through the front of the hole. And then I'm actually pulling the ribbon back through the loop and pulling tightly. So through and then through again, but through the front. Um, then I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the ribbons just to make sure I get the frayed edges. Sometimes when I pass them through the little holes, they will fray the ribbon just a bit. You could also technically uh, lightly burn the ribbon edge just to kind of seal the edge. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna be trimming them. And these are your five completed bookmarks. They're laminated. Um, this is actually the score guide that we're using for the folio itself. We are using an eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. You can use any color. Um, in this case, I'm using a template just to show you, and then I'm gonna be using an actual colored one. So what we're doing is we're scoring on the 11 inch side, but four and a half and then nine inches, and then turning it clockwise and scoring at the two inch side. So this is what the template looks like. So again, scoring on the 11 inch side at four and a half, and then again at nine, turning it clockwise once, which is to the right, and then scoring it at two inches. And this is what will give you your, your folio. Then I'm gonna go ahead and fold, increase all of the scored lines. And using a bone folder can really help this process just to kind of keep everything really flat, which is what you're gonna want. So I use my bone folder to go ahead and score, I mean, increase all of the edges, including the bottom. Now you're gonna see in a second, there's a square at the bottom right hand corner. That is a square that we do not need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut at an angle right outside the square. You see the little dotted line that I drew? That was to indicate that it's right outside that line. And you're gonna go ahead and trim both just slightly at an angle um, and to remove that square. The next thing you're gonna do is you're actually gonna do the same type of angle cut right outside of the line, um, right in the middle um, fold, which is right there. So you're gonna just slightly, basically where those dotted lines are at, right outside of the line, you're gonna go ahead and trim at an angle, again, a, just a slight angle. And this, this slight angle will actually help you fold um, this pocket or this book, this folio, once you have the pockets actually adhered up as actual pockets. Um, so this is your actual template. This is what the finished template looks like. You can see once you fold up the pockets and then you close it, it actually turns into an actual folio. Obviously this doesn't have glue, but this is your actual template, okay? So now I'm actually gonna do the same thing, but with a pink cardstock, so I can use for the book markers that we just made. Again, on the 11 inch side, score at four and a half, and then score at nine, turn it one time to the right, which is clockwise, score it at two inches. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do my cuts. And you can fold before cutting, or you can cut and then fold, either way. There's really no big difference in how you do this. So again, I'm gonna get rid of that little square in the right-hand corner. I'm gonna go ahead and cut slightly at an angle just to trim out that corner. Then we're gonna go ahead and fold, increase all score lines. You'll wanna do this before you start gluing the papers down. It makes it so much easier. Now in this project, I am using the scraps from my six to, my six by six paper pad. What you're gonna find is that there is a little bit of an excess border on this. If you don't like that, you can absolutely use more paper to cover this a little bit more. Um, but I am using it and you see how the border is just a little bit thicker. It's about maybe a fourth of an inch or a half of an inch. Um, again, you can use additional paper if you'd like. I'm trying to keep this down to just the five sheets and this is why I'm, I'm you know, using that that method. But um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out which paper you want on the front and then figure out which one you want for the coordinating flap. Um, and the flap does go in the front and in the back. Um, the flap you're gonna cut down to one and three fourths by six. The front you're gonna leave alone. And then the insides you're actually gonna cut down to um, 
four and a half by um, by four, which leaves a one and a half by by four piece. Then I'm just going ahead and trimming the excess cut aparts that I had so I could decorate later on. Now we're gonna go ahead and glue down. So you're gonna determine which ones you want on which side and then go ahead and glue it down. And just remember to leave a little bit of an excess border at the top because again, we, because we're using the six by six paper, we um, don't have as much paper to go all the way to the top. So once you fold up that flap, it may, it might, it, it actually will cover up the whole thing if you leave plenty of room at the top. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and corner round my flap and then corner round the inside flap paper, just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that down as well. Next will be the pockets. And I am going to glue down these pockets and I like to kind of flip, flip flop the patterns, but I am going to glue down the pocket fronts and then you're going to see that we're actually going to create notches um, in, in front of the pockets before I glue down. This makes it so much easier if you notch out the holes on the pockets before doing so. I like to use the uh, We Are Memory Keepers uh, envelope punch board um, just because I like the way those notches look um, and I am notching them at two and a quarter which is the halfway point of those four and a four and a half um, segments but you can actually use circle punches um, or you can just leave it without a notch I just personally like the look of the notch that comes up on that envelope punch board then you're gonna go ahead and glue down just a tiny bit of glue on each side wet glue works best for pockets like this any type of pockets wet glue is always gonna be the way you want to go um, and then you do see that we did form those pockets so next we're gonna go ahead and decorate the um, front but before doing so you notice when I folded it there was a little bit of a tension so what I do is I just I slice off just a tiny slice off of the the front panel which will help me close it a little bit better you saw I took off just a tiny, tiny sliver. Then we're gonna go ahead and glue down the front. And remember the front you do not cut at all. And again, you're still gonna have a little bit of a thicker border. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and corner around the front panel um, the same way that we did the inside flap. And you just glue that down as well. And then essentially the last bit is just the decorating. So I'm going to go ahead and use that cut apart that I had, which is why I made bookmarks out of one cut apart sheet. You do not have to do that, by the way. You can actually just do five pattern papers for your bookmarks and then just use some additional decorations later, like stickers or whatever um, to decorate. I am using these cut aparts um, because, well, one, I think they're just extremely cute, but then also um, they actually um, the when the pattern actually created a pretty decent bookmark if you'll see later and just like that we're decorating it then you get to put in your bookmarks so the bookmarks we just made you're gonna go ahead and add them into the pockets you can see I kind of play around with it for a second then I finally get the way that I want it to look last step is gonna be to add the fastener dot I get these from Dollar Tree but you can get them anywhere um, you just essentially put one of the left with one of the right and then stick them together and then put them as very close to the edge as you can um, and then go ahead and close your folio thanks for visiting please subscribe like and follow me on Instagram thanks so much bye